I, I will say, first of all, I, I still hold on to the notion that philosophy remains one of the most important interlocutors for theology. Uh, this is a, a, a dimension of the commitment uh, I have as a Catholic theologian to the notion of an analogy between faith and reason. Now, when we think about reason, we think about philosophical reason, but certainly we also think about the importance, increasingly, of the human sciences. Uh, still, I think philosophy has a very important role to play, and uh, I am personally very committed to this notion of a, of a strong dialogue between philosophy and theology. Um, the dialogue is about that of which theology ultimately speaks, and that is God. Um, theology is a logos of theos. So it is the attempt to articulate the logic of God's self-manifestation to the human being in the history of Revelation. What are the conditions of possibility for that self-manifestation? Obviously, one cannot think about God's self-manifestation without at the same time thinking about the human search for God. So, in a way, the, the process is twofold. It is the attempt to grasp the, the nature of uh, Christian revelation insofar as that revelation speaks to God's willingness to make himself known to humankind. Uh, for the Christian tradition, uh, that process is ultimately a process of, um, uh, of opening up on the part of God to his own essence, and that essence is really his love, right? Ultimately, in the person of Jesus Christ, or in theological terms, in the Christological event. But this movement from above, so to speak, correlates with a movement from below, which is the movement of the human being seeking God himself. Right? Philosophical theology as a class is interesting because I think it brings these two movements together and tries to make sense of both the search of the human being for God, but at the same time, um, the, the nature of God as someone who can be found by the human being. And here's the question that uh, uh, we can look for God, but if God is nowhere to be found, then we, we look in vain. Uh, but the Christian revelation tells us that that God we are looking for, uh, and we are looking for this God on the basis of what theology calls a natural desire for God, uh, meaning a kind of, of most profound sense of nostalgia for the absolute. Now, this search is made possible also by a God that wants to reveal himself. Uh, and, of course, for the Christian revelation, uh, that very desire is itself a gift of God. Um, so philosophical theology entertains those questions, the question of God, the question also of the human search for God, and ultimately this question is looked at in the context of a culture which is uh, defined, uh, one philosopher uh, we love, in I love, and as a result some of my students also love, uh, William Desmond would call a bewitchment mm, on the fact that God has become not of our taste, as Nietzsche would say. Um, so we are involved in a culture that is bewitched by the notion that God has become superfluous. Now this this is a culture that has a long history, of course. 
uh, theology has to look at that history. If theology has to make sense once again of the language of God and ultimately on the meaningfulness of that language, well then, then theology has to be uh, very discerning in looking at the development, at the cultural development that has made God not of our taste. And um, this has to be looked at very carefully and I, I think it is, a, it is an interesting class. But again, as I said, the question of God is not separated from questions that ultimately pertain to the, the essence of the human being. What does it mean to be a human being? And so uh, the, uh, the questions that are at the crossroad of philosophy and theology, let's say the question of suffering, uh, are in a way <coughs> interesting because they are both deeply uh, human questions but they are also deeply theological questions. In the question of suffering, uh, there emerges also uh, the, the, we could say, the, the, the problem. Um, is God to be found in this human experience? Or is God, in fact, one that because cannot be found in this human experience, then in fact we can think of as fundamentally useless, as fundamentally <coughs> unimportant. If um, the question of God has nothing to say to the deepest question of the human being, then why do we need God at all? That's the problem of articulating both the meaningfulness of uh, these profound human questions, suffering, evil, but one, one, one could also look at positive human experiences, love, uh, joy. Um, um, so in looking at the human depth of those questions, uh, one encounter the question of God. And I think this is, um, this is part of, uh, of what the Christian tradition always believed, that God is not external to the human condition. But as Augustine, Augustine would say, uh, God is interior uh, intimi meo, meaning uh, God is even more... Um, interior, more intimate uh, to my own very depth. So that at the heart of my questioning, um, at, the, at the depth of my own search for meaning, uh, I, I find uh, the presence of someone who is um, who's uh, uh, whose unreachability, uh, because God is never just a cheap answer to our questions, but whose unreachability is to a certain extent the very condition of possibility of my asking the question. Um, so God is the answer, but God is also the problem. And, uh, and here is where we, we need to retrieve not just a, 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 a cataphatic theology, meaning a theology that can in fact articulate positive answers, but also what we call an apophatic theology, that is a theology that arrives to a certain point, let's say on the threshold, and then has to recognize that it has no more things to say or that it is incapable of saying further. But isn't this attestation of an inability to say further in the end the true condition of possibility for letting God be what God really is? One that can never be reduced to our own categories, right? So I think I think theology is, is this fascinating journey, you know, between um, 
a journey of discovery between answers and, and new questions. And I think anybody who signs up for a, for a master's program in theology has to be willing to embark upon this journey and uh, has to come uh, with many questions, uh, willing to look for answers, but also to be questioned over again. So I think one of the things we, we try to do here is, uh, is to do a theology that is not dogmatic in the most uh, profound sense of the world, mean, of word, meaning uh, a theology that is just providing a person with uh, uh, cheap certainties. Um, I, I think this, this is good.